Hi there, I'm Jan Rössler. Today I'd like to introduce the new Sunny Island Dash 12 generation to you and show you how to configure its settings using the web-based user interface web UI. We are already connected to the Sunny Island. It's very easy to connect to it via Wi-Fi or respectively wireless LAN or via Ethernet for cable-bound communication. You can dial into the Sunny Island directly from your smartphone or tablet or simply log in from your PC. Once you've been connected, you will see this home screen. Select your user group here, typically installer, enter your password and you're ready to go. When you are commissioning for the first time, you automatically start with this configuration step, network configuration. Here we can see which network our Sunny Island is connected to. For permanent cable-bound communication, please always use Ethernet. The integrated wireless LAN interface should only be used locally, for example, for commissioning and maintenance purposes. As mentioned before, we are now already connected to the Sunny Island through an Ethernet cable and see the following screen. We don't have to do any settings here, so you just scroll down and click on Save and Next, and off we go to the next step. This step in which we set time and date, um, here we can just leave the automatic time synchronization on, on, but please note that this only works if the sunny island is connected to the internet. Now you only have to choose your local time zone and once this is done, you click on save and next. Now at this step, meter configuration, you can see which energy meter the Sunny Island is already connected to, typically the SMA energy meter. If so, the energy meter is displayed here with its according serial number. If that's the case and if you're already connected, of course, you can click on save and next again. Now we are already at the fourth configuration step, application. Here you can just click on new system configuration and then click on start the new system configuration in the pop-up that appears after that. Below the title select application, you can choose the mode of operation or application for the Sunny Island. In our example today, we simply choose grid mode and under system performance, we choose internal consumption only, which means increase of sales consumption. If you are doing this setup for the first time, you also need to choose the appropriate country standard. Please pay very close attention to this matter. If you are configuring your system to work on the Danish grid, for example, you need to choose the setting BDE ARN 4105 for Denmark at this point. We'll just do this together now. This is important so that the Sunny Island behaves in accordance with the local grid regulations. Once this is done, you guessed it, you just click on save and next again. Here in this step, system configuration, the Sunny Island can be configured as a single or a three-phase system and as a single or a multi-cluster system. But typically, and in our today's example, uh, your standard application at home, you simply go for a single phase uh, system and you don't even have to choose the cluster then. Just click on save and next again. Depending on the country in which the Sunny Island is used, different grid requirements affect the storage system as well as the PV system, which can also be configured during this step of the setup. Now please first choose which grid phase the Sunny Island has been connected to. In our case, we have connected the Sunny Island to phase 1 and therefore do not have to change the default settings here, but I will still show you that. It is actually a new feature that the Sunny Island can take care of the feed-in management for the PV system as well. So now you have the chance to turn the limitation of the PV output power on or off at this point. Due to this setting, the Sunny Island could now limit the connected SMA PV inverter with activated WebConnect functionality. 
But since this is not required in our example, we can simply turn this functionality off. However, the next step, activate unbalanced load limitation, is something that we have to activate so that we counter the PV battery system feeding unsymmetrically into the grid. In Denmark, we have the local country requirements to limit the unbalanced load to 3600 watt, which is exactly the value that we set here at this input field. Once this is done, we just click on save and next again. This is now already the final step of the whole setup, the battery configuration. The Sunny Island product family is equipped with an integrated battery management for lead acid batteries of type FLA, so flooded lead acid, and VRLA, so valve regulated lead acid. It is also possible to connect an external battery system, which is typically used with other battery technologies like lithium ion in our example here. You can find a list of the currently approved battery manufacturers and types in the download section of the homepage. So here we simply choose the battery type, lithium ion in our example, and put in its rated capacity so the Sunny Island knows what it's working with. And once this is done, we're just about done with the whole setup. 150 amp hours make a lot more sense here in this example. So save and next again, and we are already at the end. At the end of the setup, you will see a summary of all the parameters you put in, which gives you a good chance for a final check. So once you're happy with all of your parameter settings here, you can now click on continue once you have scrolled down and the Sunny Island is then ready to go. You will now see the Sunny Island's dashboard with all the information you need and you can be happy that the setup has been done successfully.